In this video, we're back on the 1971 Camaro and we're gonna go ahead and install these e-brake cable brackets that were mounted to the old floor pans and torque boxes that we removed. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Dan and you're watching Resto Car, your source for DIY content to help you finish those builds. All right guys, so it's been a little while since we've done anything with the 1971 Camaro, but today we're gonna to just do a little bit of work and we're gonna get these brackets back on the car. And then at the end of the video, I'll go ahead and give you guys an update on where we're going next. So we have to put on the two brackets that were on the torque boxes. These are where the two cables run through. And then we have a bracket that we need to mount to the driver's side floor pan. And I believe this was for the brake lines that came down, the hard lines. And then we have the large bracket for the e-brake cable. This is the one where the cable comes from the inside of the car through the floor pan and then is to the outside. So this is just a reinforcement for it. So let's start on the torque box brackets first because they're the easier ones to put on and I remember where they go with the measurements and everything. One piece of advice would be to transfer these brackets over as soon as you can. So as soon as you cut your old panel out, take that bracket, transfer it over to the new panel and then you'll be good to go. When you wait a few months, it gets harder to remember where these things go, which direction they go, all that kind of stuff. And if you didn't write down any measurements, it'd be pretty hard to uh, remember exactly where everything goes. So, so do it as soon as you can so that you don't forget. All right, so let's put these torque box e-brake brackets on. All right, guys, so here's a look at this bracket here. So this one mounts to the torque box like this, and your e-brake cable comes in from this side and then goes through here to the wheel. So when I did my measurements for these brackets here, basically the edge of this hole here to the edge of this flange is about seven eighths to an inch. So that's what I'm gonna go with on both sides. And we'll go ahead and get these spot welded in. But first I'm gonna go ahead and take all these brackets and clean up the undersides and spray them with some weld through primer. All right guys, so we got weld through primer on the e-brake brackets for the torque box and we also got weld through primer on the torque boxes. So now we are ready to plug weld these brackets in place. All right guys, one side down, one to go. So what I did there is I put a tack weld inside the hole where the plug weld would go to firmly hold that piece in place because there's really no good way to get a clamp on this piece. So the next best thing would be to put a sheet metal screw through there and it just didn't feel the need to do that for this piece. So I tack welded it, then plug welded it. So the other thing that's happening here is because the old spot welds were on the, the edge here, this is just burning off when I'm doing the weld, but that's okay. We'll just come back, grind it down and clean it up. So when you see me come back and just putting a couple extra welds in here, it's because I'm trying to build this back up so that whenever I grind it down and everything, it'll look nice and smooth there. So that's all I'm doing there. All right. Let's go ahead and do this side. All right guys, so here we have the e-brake bracket, the one that takes the main cable coming in from the car and then feeds it outside through the driver's side floor pan here. So this floor pan was replaced. And you can see that we have a pretty large gap right there, so it doesn't fit the contour of the bracket that well. I know this bracket wasn't bent. This is pretty much how it was from the factory, and it lines up good here, and it lines up good here. So the contour of this floor pan right here is just different. So I'm not going to change the bracket. I'm not going to beat on it and smash it in and make it any different. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to weld it there. And then what I'll do from the inside is just try to stretch out this floor pan a little bit to meet better with the bracket. So... I'm gonna go ahead and weld this in place. So I don't have any measurements to go on, but I do know that this is about the location where the original one was because I took the floor pan and traced around it. So let's go ahead and mark these holes here and then put some weld through primer there. And this hole right here is a factory hole. I'm assuming it's a drain hole or something in case water gets behind here, it can come out. But uh, this is a spot weld and then these three holes are spot welds. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and weld this bracket on now. And what this is for is raising the brake lines up off the bottom of the car so that they are in line with this support over here. So the brake lines come down and they just get secured to here and here and then all the way back. So 
We're gonna be using factory lines, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in place. All right, so we got all of the brackets welded in place. We got the two e-brake cable brackets back here welded on the torque boxes. So we got the passenger side and the driver's side. Up here, we have the e-brake cable bracket installed. Again, this is the cable that comes from inside the car and out. It comes out right here, so right there where you can see that. That's where, so we'll have to cut that a hole out there and we'll make it fit the bracket really nice. And then this one here is again, the bracket that holds the brake lines up off the car so that they're somewhat level with this cross member here because here's the second mounting point. So those hard lines come down from the firewall and mount here, here, and then further back. So those are all in place. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and grind down the welds using a cutoff wheel and a sanding disc. All right, guys, we got all the welds ground down, so we are ready to epoxy prime these. I will do that on another day after I get done making other mods to the underside. Here's a look at the e-brake bracket. We got the hole drilled in there, so that's good. And then we got this one cleaned up as well. So we are good to go on the brackets. They are where they need to be. All right, guys, so the brackets are on, so we'll talk a little bit about what's left before I can put Raptor liner on the bottom of this thing. So. First thing is, is I want to get my shifter ring installed. I don't want to install it with sheet metal screws. I want to put a nice plate there, tap it, and then put some bolts through it. I ordered the shifter ring and that'll be here later this week. So we'll be able to work on that this weekend. The other thing I want to do is put an access panel in for the fuel pump. So I need to get my tank and all that stuff. That may be another week or two before I order that. And then aside from a couple of little things, uh, the last thing I need to do is run my bulkheads for my battery terminal. So I'm going to run those in the transmission tunnel and I ordered those also. So those should be here this weekend. So it's possible this weekend we'll be able to put the battery terminals in and then also the shifter ring. So that's the plan. If that doesn't work out, then I'm going to move to the subframe and start working on it. The biggest thing I need to do there, aside from sandblast and paint it, is notch it so that I can fit my alternator and AC compressor in there. So let me show you that real quick. So I want to keep this with what they call the quote unquote tight look. And uh, what that means is we have the alternator in its stock location down underneath, and then the AC compressor is down underneath as well. So what that means for me is that I have to notch a few things. So if you can see here, the AC just barely clear. So I wanna give it a little more room in there. So we'll just have to take a little bit out there. Here's the alternator side. You can see that it's just barely touching it right there. So that side needs notched as well. All right guys, so we're that much closer to getting this underside finished up. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more or you wanna see those videos I just talked about, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up because it helps the channel. We'll see you in the next one.